Hey everyone! Today I'll take a look at these LoRa modules from Rayx. Have you ever had a project where you needed to send some data over a long distance? Maybe a remote sensor of some kind, like a weather monitor, or even an alarm system? Or maybe you'd like to water your plants on the other side of your property just by pressing a button. These are situations where technologies like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth probably aren't the most practical. While their network speeds are great, their range is really limited. With my home network, for instance, the signal drops down to one or two bars just by being in the opposite corner of the house. And after a few steps into the backyard, it's practically non-existent. But these are exactly the kinds of applications where LoRa devices like this work really well. Essentially, they give you much better range in exchange for reduced bandwidth. So this means that you won't be streaming movies over it. But for signaling and periodic updates over a long distance, this is a really good trade-off. These Rayax modules are particularly nice to use because they have a simple API that you can interact with over a UART interface. And since most microcontrollers and single board computers support UART, that means that these modules will work with all kinds of devices. Now, the devices that I've chosen to use here are both Esprino boards meaning that they come preloaded with a JavaScript interpreter. And that'll make all of the asynchronous network code really easy to work with. You can also install Esprino on other boards, but I haven't experimented with that yet. This one is an Esprino Wi-Fi, which I just covered in a video yesterday. And this one is a Pixel.js, which I haven't really gotten to show off yet. But one thing I really like here is that if you line up the ground pins, you can configure the rest of the pins so that the Rayax module plugs right in without needing any wires or a breadboard. To demonstrate, I've programmed them so that pressing this button on the Wi-Fi sends the text on and releasing it sends off. Then the pixel is listening for those LoRa messages and responding accordingly. The communication is also bi-directional, so pressing one of the buttons on the side of the pixel lights up the LED on the Wi-Fi. So this is the code that I used to make that happen. And I'm editing it here in the Esprino web IDE. And you can see the first thing I've done is I've imported a module from a GitHub repo. And this is a module that I wrote. Basically, it just simplifies the interface for dealing with these Rayx modules so that instead of using a bunch of low-level UART commands, I can work with JavaScript methods and promises, which makes the code a lot easier. Next, I'm setting up the UART interface with the pins that the Rayx module is connected to. And this is the default baud rate for those devices, but there's also a method in the API for changing the baud rate. Next, I'm instantiating this LoRa object using that serial interface that I just defined. And now we can call methods on that LoRa object. And the first thing I'm doing is setting the network ID to 13. So with LoRa, the devices have to be on the same network in order to see each other's messages. And basically, that's just a matter of setting the network ID and making sure that each device uses the same one. I chose 13 for this demo, but that's entirely arbitrary. They just have to be on the same one. Next, I'm setting the address for this LoRa device to 1. And this is the Rayx module that's connected to the Esprino Wi-Fi. The other one that's connected to the Pixel, I set to 2, just so they have a different address. And with the address for incoming messages, you can actually tell which address it came from. So if you had a bunch of LoRa devices like this, it might be useful to know which one sent the packet. Next, I'm adding an event listener to the LoRa object that's listening for data event types. And so every time the LoRa device receives an incoming message, it's going to emit these data events. And this method here will be able to listen to them. So once we've received an incoming message, we're just checking the data that was sent and comparing it with this string. So if the message that was sent is the string on, then we'll set this LED to high. And if it's anything else like the string off, we'll set the LED to low. This event here has other properties too. It has the address of the device that sent the message, as well as things like signal strength and signal to noise ratio. Then down here, I'm setting a watch that's listening for changes to the button state and it's listening for both rising and falling changes, so when the button is pressed or released. The repeat property is set to true, because otherwise it behaves like a one-time trigger, and I want to catch it every single time the button is pressed and released. So the callback here is going to have this state property, which will be true or false depending on the state of the button. 
So when the button is down, we'll send on, and when the button is up, we'll send off. And this is being sent using this lora.send method. So it's sending with the first parameter a string, which will be either on or off, and then as the second parameter, it's the address of the device that it's sending it to. In this case, it's being sent from the Esprino Wi-Fi device, which is address 1, to the Pixel.js device, which is address 2. And that's really all there is to the code. Here's a more complex example. I've got the Esprino Wi-Fi programmed to be a web server that I can connect my browser to. Now, when I change this dropdown on the page, it sends the changes over LoRa to the pixel. And this is also bidirectional, so when I press the button on the side of the pixel, it updates the page. Now I basically have a bridge between my LoRa network and my Wi-Fi network, but why not take it even further to use the Bluetooth capabilities of the pixel to bridge over to Bluetooth devices, like this PuckJS. Anyway, I just thought I'd share these devices with you here and show some of the projects I've been playing around with. I'll leave links in the description for the source code and also for the hardware if you're interested. Also, if you have any ideas for projects that you'd like to see built using these LoRa modules, let me know in the comments. And until next time, bye!